Hi guys, Kelly Harris here. I've got something really interesting to show you today. Slightly unusual from your normal swells you see on cars. Let's go and have a look, shall we? So before I start talking about this phenomenon, this is sort of unusual issue, I'm gonna do for reference, I'm actually going to Measure the paint, this is total thickness, so this is your primer, color, clear coat. So what I'm gonna do, 124, this in microns, 120. For reference, piece of A4 paper, really good quality is about 80 microns. Human hair does vary a lot, but it can be around 100 microns. So paint is thin. So you see we've had a range of about 108 to 120. I'm gonna be careful here, stand here as well. 118, so you get an idea. Of thickness. Now I'm going to take you over to a training panel. This training panel is purposely painted by us in-house and we've got eight of these exactly the same as this and this is replicate factory paints. What I mean by that we've taken this back to bare metal when it was a brand new panel, put primer or an a, a etch primer on there really, then a, a high build primer, it was sanded down in between coats, then it's had base colour and it's glazed blue and then clear coat lacquer. So just to give you an idea what we're trying to do, if I show you here and take a reading, you can see that is very, very typical, very typical of this vehicle here. So what we've got is exactly the same thickness of paint material, the total volume of paint material. So what is it I'm trying to show you? So we all know about swell. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn off the oh, lights, so it's gonna get a bit dark in here, and I'm gonna use just a spot lamp. Now, as we go down the vehicle, I've noticed the worst area for swells is on this rear quarter panel. And that isn't actually that bad. As you can see on the screen there, it's really not that swirly. And the camera doesn't lie, as they say. It really isn't that swirly. So what we've got, we've got spotlights. So I can turn on spotlights. And we've got round spotlights up there, which are pretty much the same sort of LED spotlights as the handheld ones. That's going to interfere with today's video. So I'm actually going to turn all other lights off. And all we've got now is just the strip lamps. They're actually LED lights, but they're a thin strip. So what that gives us is the opportunity to see sinkage, settling, shrinking, or sinkage. And it's really easy to see on this panel here. And what we have is we've polished an area already to show you what polishing can do. And this phenomenon is literally like, um, I haven't got the sort of fabric cloth material on, but if you have a T-shirt on, I quite often show some on a t-shirt and it's quite wavy. It's like a waffle, a very, very fine waffle. And that's the finish that you get in new factory paint. It's to do with the drying and the way it all settles into itself as it shrinks and settles and dries. And it gives this, you've got an orange peel finish and then you've actually got a wave inside the orange peel. So there's a double wave and it really detracts from the light or the reflection of light or the clarity. So what we've got, I can see it very, very easily on this panel, this, this, or this car, all the way down. It's on pretty much every car we see. Occasionally, very occasionally, we do get a factory car that doesn't have this issue. Most of the time, I'd say 95 to 98% of the time, it is bad as this car. So what we can do, we can actually polish it, not actually for removing swirls now, we're actually gonna polish it to remove this sinkage. Now, before we start polishing, I could use, I need something quite heavy cutting. I can't use a finishing pad. A finishing pad's not gonna work. So in this case, we could, I could go, on, go with the Lake Country HGO heavy cut pad there, foam pad. I could go with potentially a microfiber pad, which is a heavy cutting. And there's a good chance, and do you know what? On this car, maybe even the one step would work. When I say maybe, it might be you might have to do one and a half passes instead of one. It just prefer how much you, what spindle speed you run, what pressure you have on the, and the way you use it. And even the orbit, depends what orbit size machine. You've got a 21 mil, 15, 12 mil. So depending on the orbit, if that was on a 21, I'm absolutely certain it would fix this perfectly one pass. But then of course, this is like heavier cutting. So I'd put that on a 15 mil orbit, maybe even a 12 mil orbit and it'd work. But likewise, this would work and be very, very good on 15, 21 mil orbit sort of DA machines. But in this case, to change it a little bit, I'm actually gonna go with the LC Power Tools Udos, the 51E. Now I've gone for a medium cut compound. I'm in P2, which is the 15 mil orbit. 
We remember we could go to 21 and we go to a rotary. I'm using the, the micro wall Udo pad designed for this machine. Short fiber means it works similar to a microfiber, but it can also be used with a rotary. So I've done two passes and that little area there. I didn't really put any pressure on, it was just the weight of the machine. When I run it up to about three quarters of maximum speed, then I back the speed down at the end, just to help it refine a little bit. What I'm gonna do now, I don't wanna push and poke at this compound. I wanna wipe it off very, very carefully. If I start prodding and poking, I'm just scoring in the sort of residue compound. And that's the last thing you wanna do is undo your work. Still got orange pill. You need to wet sand. And funny enough, actually, the Udos we can actually do wet sanding with. It's got a sanding mode. That would take away both problems, the orange peel and this sort of sinkage. But in this case, we're just polishing. So I can see it very, very clearly. And you can see the clarity of the bulb. It's a lot sharper image. Bear in mind, we haven't refined the paint yet, which will give it more gloss. But it's that there's a wave inside of the orange peel that's taken away the sharpness which is what we do here all the time. We're always polishing cars, give that better clarity. And it's got a, it almost looks like there's fallout, there's a, contaminants on the surface, but there isn't. It's actually the sinkage that's on the, in the surface of the clear coat that happens after probably about a month to two months, depends on temperature and how much material's been put on, but it's, a, it's actually, the clear coat is actually taking a form of the base coat underneath and the base coat underneath is a matte textured finish when it dries fully. What happens is when a clear coat first goes on, it's actually um, still liquid almost. It's got a surface tension, skin to it. And over time, as all the solvents evaporate out, it shrinks into that textured area underneath. And the reason why the textured area or the texture of the base coat is there is so it gives a key for the clear coat to stick to. So what you're seeing there is um, a mimic of the clear coat is sort of taking form of the base coat underneath and now it is removed and that's a permanent fix it can't ever come back once that's removed all that can happen now to your car it can become swirly and that's robbing a very large object when you see this as a look from long distance the large object has a, a dullness to it and suddenly it looks all glossy and wet again and that's before you do any wet sanding and refining there's none of that involved there it's just a simple heavy stage compounding as I say, I'll recap. I could have also chosen to use a heavy cut microfiber or a heavy cut foam pad in the Lake Country range, HGO range. But in this case, their sister company, I went with the Udos and Udo heavy cutting pad. All three of those pads are gonna be really, really good at fixing that problem there. Really common, all cars could do with polishing. We probably polish 97 to 98% of every new car, regardless if it's got swirls or not. We show customers that this fact. We've got the videos unlisted that we show people and people want their cars done. Why wouldn't you? If you can have your car detailed, you want it looking glossy. Hopefully that's helped you. Have you ever seen it before? Have you got the right lighting to see it? Would you like help to understand more about lighting? Um, hopefully this video has been very, very useful and something you haven't seen possibly before and um, something that we've been teaching for five years, five, six years, it's probably about five years. And we almost adopted a completely new technique and method from changing our lights in the building, creating an upstairs floor. So it meant I have a, a ceiling in here, which means I can control the light all year round so we don't have the sun coming up and down because it's sealed. Gave us a new, whole new -ish world of issues. We could see more. The more lighting you get, the better the lighting gets, the more defects you see which results into what I see here now. Thanks for watching. Hopefully it's been helpful. Loads more videos like this coming. Kelly Harris, Global Director of Training for Lake Country Manufacturing and LC Power Tools. Thank you, goodbye.